let me set the stage here. The footage here was shot about, oh, I don't know, eight years ago, I guess. Fellow picked up a Hammond B3 organ in China and had it shipped to Canada. Well, first of all, in China, it's 240 volts. It's 50 hertz. We're 60 hertz here. He had some guy converted over to 120, but he did nothing about the frequency, and the system will not start. We're going to see if we can get this thing to start up, but he does need a different motor for for 60 hertz. Yeah, well. Okay, so this is the uh, this is the inside of a, a Hammond B3. This is the preamp chassis, all the tubes, and what we have on here is we have a, a unit that. Uh, was being converted over from 220 to 110 and uh, the motor the run motor won't run and the preamp won't work so we're gonna take a look and see if we can figure out what the problem is with this uh, it was done at another shop that uh, rewired this so something obviously hasn't been done correctly so see if we can figure this thing out so we're gonna measure the value of this uh, starting resistor for the, the start motor it should be about 250 ohms for the 115 volt version and a thousand ohms for 230 and this would be in a conversion I think this thing has got the wrong resistor in it we measure this here it's coming up at a thousand ohms so this resistor needs to be changed to a 250 ohm but what I can do to see if we can get this thing to start so I'm just going to apply power to the unit that switch is still on yeah I want it on okay, okay so when I touch this here it should be able to hit the hit the start switch now. Well, I can't start it when the run switch is on. Oh, put the run switch off. Mm -hmm. Hit the start switch. And throw the run switch. For those that don't know how this system works, the, the Hammond B3 and C3 they were a what they call a, a tone wheel organ. So there's a a. a basically a wheel with a bunch of slots cut into discs that pass over a pickup coil and they kind of work like an electric guitar with a string vibrating over a magnet and a pickup. These work the same way. As the tone wheel spins, it induces a tone into each of the coils and the switches on the keyboard turn these coils on and off, which is fed to the amplifier. And they use a synchronous motor and synchronous motor is synchronized to the incoming power. But a synchronous motor cannot start itself. So they have a separate motor that is used to spin the synchronous motor up to speed. And then once you've got it up to speed, you drop the, the, the uh, start motor and turn on the power to, the, to run the unit. And it will catch and it will hold it at that correct speed. Now, converting one of these from 50 to 60 hertz is a little more complicated than changing from 220 to 115 volts or 240 to 120 because the motor itself is designed to operate at 50 hertz. And of course, now it's running at 60 hertz. Now, even though we do get it to catch, which we will, it will uh, run at a higher speed. No different than if you take an electric clock that's designed for 50 hertz and run on 60 hertz, it's gonna run fast. Well, this is gonna have all of your notes are gonna be higher in pitch. So he does need to get a 60 hertz motor synchronous motor for it but the fellow that brought this over he didn't realize that the you know he thought it was just convert the voltage and uh, well you know it, it'll run but it won't run right but we're trying to get the thing to start up here just so we can prove that okay it's running now we can get the motor and install the motor almost trying to go right i think yeah. we've got to change that resistor to the right value Okay, we're gonna hit this thing at once more time. One more time here. I'm just gonna try and get the thing to run by holding the the uh, start motor in place long enough to see if I can get the thing to fire up, and then we'll see if this thing makes any noise. I'll get you to throw the the uh, start switch on. Now he did get the motor, and he did install it himself because it's just a bolt-on thing. But I changed out the resistor for him to get it so that it would start and uh, then he went and got the motor and did that part himself so there's no video to finish that but we will get it going here i never bothered to publish this because i never got it and never finished it and i was going to go back and change the motor out for him once he got it but he was able to change that himself and uh, got it working but this is just getting the thing running i thought maybe you guys might be interested to see the inside of a hammond b3 
Well, we're getting the sound out of it. I think we got it. What we need to do is we need to get the right resistor because this one's a thousand ohm, and that's for the 230 volt version. We need a, a 250. So I think if we change out this 250 or this thousand ohm resistor for a 250, that should uh, make the start motor operate at the right torque once the synchronous motor kicks in to allow it to completely synchronize. Okay, let's mount the resistor in here, the new one, 250 ohm. I'm working on this at the fellow's house because this is like a 400 pound organ, so it's not like he can move it. So I'm in a very cramped space working in his uh, basement to uh, get this thing at least somewhat functional so we can prove that it will run. What tip is this? This is, this is an actual soldering tip or is this a... Like a, That's not the right tip. Yeah, well, the solder's not even sticking this, to This it. is the soldering gun that he gave me to work with. This is like one that's designed for, I don't know, it's anything but soldering. Let's see if it'll... Is it not going to work? I don't know. We'll find out if we get it in here. Get enough heat in here, it should stick. Oh, that good one is. Oh, this isn't getting well, it's getting hot but it's not the solder's not sticking to it okay well hold on very a well I mean, yeah. so, unless it's just try a different type of solder maybe another thing that concerned me on this was the noise that the uh the run motor was making when we got it going like you'll hear you'll hear the bearings and they're they're quite loud and they shouldn't be at least the other b3 that i know of that uh, i know a guy that's got one he was keyboard player for the the band trooper i used to maintain his home recording studio equipment he had his b3 uh, in his in his home studio and it was silent when it was running he cranked the thing up with the start motor and then flipped the run switch on and like you couldn't hear it running it was so quiet but this one here it's the the tone wheels making quite a bit of noise again the guy bought this thing sight unseen had it shipped all the way over from china and then is spending money to try to get the thing to work. And I, I think he probably should have left it where it was. But he's into it for now, you know, for thousands of dollars to try to get this thing going. Now, these things do go for, you know, several thousand dollars when they're working. But this one here um, seems to be in a bit rough shape. Oh, I think this one will work. Which one? This one. Oh, do you think it'll work? Yeah, I think we'll, I think we'll be able to manage with this. It's just uh, getting it hot enough, and I just got it going here. Um, the solder that you had wasn't really the greatest stuff, but oh, okay. I've, I've got my own I here. Which... My solder in my in my kit for that other gun. Yeah. And yeah. rosin core, uh, acid core. Yeah, I don't want acid. I want some rosin core. I don't know what I want. This is me. Also, it's not where it belongs. Ah, the fun of working on stuff in the house. I tell you, it's a lot harder to work on things when you stick. don't have room to work. And then when you're handed tools like this to work with. Okay, I got the new resistor in place right down here. This is the, what they call the starting resistor. How it works on these Hammonds is you have a, you have a synchronous motor here which spins the tone wheel. And it is started by just a, a squirrel cage uh, induction motor that gets it going. And once it gets up to speed, uh, we reduce the current to the start motor to allow the synchronous motor to take over. So I've put the proper value of resistor in now. This one had a 1000 ohm resistor, which is what was used for the 240 volt version. It is now got a 250 ohm resistor. So let's just try this unit and see if it will start. Ready? Go ahead. I think we're okay.
Try playing something. Yeah, success is running, but I don't think it should be making that noise. The bearings are really noisy on this thing. Yep. So you should be good to go now, I would think. You should have some sound. Motor spinning. I think everything's just warming up. Yeah, here we go. It just takes up one. Yep, tube's got to warm up. It stopped. <laughs> I don't know. It was running. Try yeah. starting it again. Weird. The problem he's got here is the bearings and stuff are no good. They're dragging it down. And he did get a new motor for it. We never did get it going beyond this. It also could have been damaged in shipment, right? Oh, but right. he did replace the motor, and that fixed the problem. Okay, your, your wheel spinning, your tone wheel spinning. And that time it stopped. Hmm. It was running there for a minute. Yeah, it did run there for a minute. We're going to end it here because this is as far as I got on here. And then uh, he had another one, another B3, a much older one. He actually pulled the motor out of that one and put it on this one, and it fixed the problem. So it was the motor, the bearing, I think, was dry, and it was just dragging it down. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.